Voting Rights Act in 1965, uh, whether we're talking about an Irish Catholic being elected president in 1960, uh, or uh, the numbers that Hillary Clinton drew uh, in a primary, which is another, I think, very significant part of the campaign, uh, that's the uh, way to think, is this historic, and just say, yeah, it is, uh, before we move on to other questions. Second uh, way to think about it, is this a significant moment in our uh, kind of bigger narratives of modern American politics, where there's a possibility uh, for real political change uh, to take place. And I think there, too, the answer is yes. If we take uh, that there has been a major contest since the 1950s between liberalism and conservatism in the public arena, I think that uh, 2008 offers the possibility, the possibility uh, that what my colleague called the age of Reagan uh, could come to an end, uh, and the opportunity for some new era to start. Uh, it, there, there's evidence that can be happening. In terms of conservatism, I do think conservatism is in a state of political crisis, and that was part of what was playing out in this election. Uh, and there's uh, different ways in which we have seen this. Uh, first, conservatives face a challenge of discredited leadership. Uh, I think, uh, I, I've said this before, that George Bush in many ways can become the Jimmy Carter of the Republican Party in terms of what he comes to symbolize in electoral politics. Uh, the failure of a movement, the failure of a, a certain party to govern, uh, the failure of a certain set of ideas. And I think uh, the political damage that he will cause beyond uh, issues of policy I think will be uh, quite significant. This was an election about George Bush, uh, not just Barack Obama, and we have to remember that. Uh, conservatives face a challenge of discredited policies. Many of the core ideas of the conservative movement, not since 2000, but going back to the 1940s and 50s, are now being questioned. Uh, in the realm of political economy, the idea of deregulation, uh, which, yes, liberals have supported as well, uh, but was really pushed aggressively by conservatives, particularly in the 1970s and 1980s. Market-based approaches to dealing with economic problems uh, has now come under question. The idea of tax cuts uh, being the primary way in which we stimulate economic growth, which is an argument we have heard uh, many times through many different presidencies, is uh, now also under uh, question. Uh, in foreign policy, the Bush doctrine uh, in many ways was new, but in many ways continued. An older argument that we saw in the 1980s about the potential to bring democracy in areas such as Central America goes back to James Burnham, the intellectual in the 1950s and 40s, uh, who was a key uh, conservative intellectual who made many arguments, I think, uh, that the Bush doctrine is rooted in. Uh, and, and as a result of Iraq in particular, many of the arguments in terms of foreign policy are now also, I think, uh, at risk of being discredited. And finally, for conservatives, they face a moment of internal division, significant internal divisions that always exist, but are now greater than the unity that the movement has. Uh, and we saw all kinds of fights playing out, not just in this election, but in recent years, between fiscal conservatives and big government conservatives, social conservatives and libertarians, uh, that are now, I think, uh, really in many ways consuming the movement. And they don't have a leader or a set of ideas to uh, put, that, uh, put those divisions uh, back, back in place. Uh, and on, on the other side, I think uh, there's clearly evidence the liberalism as expressed through the Democratic Party uh, has in the past four to eight years undergone something of an, a revival that uh, the Obama campaign was able to bring together. In terms of ideas, we're seeing some new synthesis emerge revolving around the issue of middle class security, uh, that many of the policies, if you go through the Obama campaign, hone in on. Uh, the idea that public policy does not just have to create the middle class, uh, as was so important in the New Deal, or to expand the middle class to new groups, as we saw in the 1960s, 
but to create a certain kind of financial security for the middle class. An argument that was in place before September, but which I think resonated very well with the collapse of Wall Street and the collapse of the housing market around the time of the campaign. Uh, I think Obama has, and, and Democratic leaders in Congress are trying to put together some new agenda around that theme. On foreign policy, I think the ideas are still less clear, uh, but clearly there's been some uh, discussion of the importance of multilateralism, diplomacy, uh, combined with a renewed interest in human rights uh, that we're not as sure yet will guide uh, the current administration. And equally important, uh, liberals, progressives, whatever you want to call them, and that in itself is an interesting question, have shown uh, a revived organizational strength, which is, I think, a key part of this campaign. The campaign discussions tend to focus on the candidate, uh, but the story was as much about uh, the supporters and how they put that candidate in office. And there were different aspects of this. Uh, the development of a net roots, uh, a kind of internet-based communications strategy, which has been going on now uh, at least since the 2004 campaign, but really before that as well. The development of new think tanks, such as John Podesta's think tank in Washington, which is now in charge of the transition team, to media outlets uh, that uh, sprung up from uh, you know, Air America to MSNBC, which some can argue became a voice uh, for progressive ideas again. And I think there's some comparison that can be made to what conservatives did in the 1970s uh, in terms of putting a very strong organizational infrastructure in place to promote the ideas and candidates of the conservative movement. Liberals did not do that for a long time. Uh, and I think this election saw some of those efforts finally come together, and I think that's important. Final part of the question, uh, is this historic in the sense, is this an election that moves us from one era to the other? Does it actually not just have the potential to be an important moment, but does it move us into a new era? That one I don't know, uh, and I think we have to approach that as historians, political scientists, sociologists, whatever your discipline, here we're historians, uh, with a, a degree of skepticism, uh, at least, uh, and, and think about what would really be needed to turn this campaign into something bigger than the election of an individual. Uh, some of the challenges, I think, to a new era have been outlined already. I think the global nature of this economic crisis makes it fundamentally different, as Alan said, to the Depression, uh, which was also global, but I agree, could be dealt with uh, in a more nation-bound way. Another important aspect is that conservatism doesn't just disappear. Uh, I'm often uh, frustrated when I hear historians who write so much about uh, the, the complexity of the conservative movement, uh, how it was really built uh, around years of developing ideas, and developing new policies and institutions that could not uh, just be erased within one minute. Same with liberalism uh, between the 1930s and the 1960s. To think that in 2008, everything that's taken place since Ronald Reagan or since Richard Nixon is just going to go away. Conservatives have successfully introduced many ideas which are under crisis, which are being challenged, but they still have some strength in the population. 